Hi guys, today I want to talk about velocity time graphs and how they can be useful to do uh, to find out two bits of information. Uh, they can tell you the distance travelled and then uh, the acceleration. Now firstly just look here on the left hand side velocity is here. In this case this object well uh, I think the maximum it goes up to is 15 meters per second so it could be a car could be uh, I don't know any, any vehicle really. We've got time along the x-axis here so there's time in seconds. Okay so firstly how do you find the distance traveled? Well the distance traveled on a velocity time graph all you need to do is find the area under the graph. So if we have a look at section A here we've got this area here it's just a triangle so to find the area of a triangle, we just use uh, half times the base times the height. So the base is 5 seconds, the height is 5 meters per second. So we'll get a half times by uh, 5 by 5. So that's 25 divided by 2, which equals 12.5 meters. So that means during the first five seconds the object went 12.5 meters. Okay section B now well it's between 5 and uh, 10 seconds. Now you you can use the trapezium rule but if you just want to break the the shape up into two different shapes uh, people might you might find that easier. So we've got a square here, so we need to find the area here, which is five by five. So we're going to get uh, 25 meters. And then here again with the triangle, we can apply a half times the base times the height. Well, the base is five, so we get a half times five times by the height. And be careful with the height; it's going from uh, 5 to 10, sorry to 15. So the the, the length there uh, from 5 to 10, uh, sorry again, from 5 to 15 is 10. So we do a half times 5 times 10. So 5 times 10 is 15, sorry 50. Uh, and a half of 50 is 25, so that's 25 meters. So we went uh, here we want 25, this section is 25, so 25 plus 25, the whole of section B is 50 meters. Okay. Okay, now we're going to look at section C. Well, section C is really, really nice, nice and easy. We've just got a rectangle here. So here's 5, and then the height is 15. So 5 times by 15, uh, we find 5 by 15 is 75, so section C is 75 meters. Okay, next up, section D. So section D starts at 15 seconds and ends at 25 seconds. And we've got, again, we can look at two different parts of D. So the large square, well, we've got uh, 10 here by a height of 10. So this whole section here is 10 by 10, which is 100 meters. Okay, this section here, uh, we've got a triangle. So again, let's use half times the base times the height. Now the base is from 15 to 25, so that's 10. And the height goes from 10 to 15. So we get a half times the base, which was 10, times the height, which is 5. So a half to, uh, 10 times 5 is 50. Half of that is uh, 25. So the final amount of uh, final distance traveled in section D, 100 uh, plus. 25 is 125 meters. 
Okay, our last section, E. So here's E here. So E, we've got two, uh, two shapes. We need to find the area. So we've got from 25 to 30, which is 5, and it goes up to a height of 5, so 25 uh, meters here. And then here, we've got a half times base times height. Oh, make that look a bit more like a B. Half times 5 times 5, which is 12.5. So 25 plus 12.5 gives us uh, 37.5 meters. And finally, if we add all the different sections up, uh, we're gonna find that our total distance traveled is 30, sorry, 300 meters. So if we add all the different sections, so section A, uh, section B, section C, uh, section D, and then section E, we find that the total distance traveled by our object is 300 meters. Now, and not only can a velocity time graph help us find the distance traveled, we can also use it to find the acceleration of the object. So what's its rate of change of velocity? Now to do that, we uh, are going to use the formula uh, the, the, oops, uh, that the acceleration is equal to the final velocity of that section minus the initial velocity of that section divided by the time taken. So let's apply that to our section A. Okay, so firstly, what is our initial velocity U? Well, that is zero. Our final velocity here, V, is equal to five. The time taken is five seconds. So we just need to plug this into our formula, and we find that uh, v, which is 5, minus 0, all divided by 5, we get 1 meter per second squared. So that's our value of our acceleration. And in fact, if you look at the graph, roughly for every time you go across 1, you go up by 1. Okay. Now, exactly the same idea with section B. So we're going to use the formula A equals V minus U over T. Okay, this time, this is where B starts, this is where B ends. So we need to look at what the velocity is doing here. Well, if we work our way across, we can see that U, the starting section uh, of B, is 5. And if we work our way across here, we can see that V, the final section, uh, the final velocity of this section is 15 meters per second. And the time taken, well again, T is going to equal five seconds. So let's put this into our formula. So 15 minus five, all divided by five. 15 minus five is 10. 10 over five, well that is equal to 2 meters per second squared. And again, if we look for every uh, one second we go across, we've increased our velocity by 2 meters per second. Okay, this time we're looking at section C, and, and hopefully this time we should find that section C actually has got no acceleration. And let me explain why. Well, the initial velocity here is... Uh, is 15. The final velocity is also 15. The time that that section takes is from 10 uh, to 15. So that whole section is 5 seconds. So if you look in our formula, so the final velocity, 15, minus the initial velocity, which is also 15, divided by 5. Well, 15 minus 15 is 0. 0 over 5, well that's still 0, so we've got no acceleration in this section. Okay, let's have a look at the acceleration for D. Now this time, uh, the time taken is from 15 to 25, 
So that whole section there takes 10 seconds. Uh, our final velocity, let's have a look at that first, is uh, 10 meters per second. Our initial velocity is 15 meters per second. So this time, uh, our final velocity, 10 minus our initial velocity, 15, all divided by 10 seconds. Well, we find that 10 minus 15 is equal to minus 5 divided by 10, which gives us minus a half uh, meters per second squared. So this is actually a deceleration. For every uh, second, we actually go down by uh, half a meter per second. Okay, finally down to the last one. Uh, this time, section E, well, it goes from 25 to 30. So it takes five seconds. Our final velocity, V, is equal to five meters per second. Our initial velocity, U, is equal to uh, 10 meters per second. So V minus U over T, five minus 10 divided by five. Five minus 10 is equal to uh, minus five divided by 5 gives us minus 1 meters per second squared. Okay, 